and welcome back. Yes, now this is the follow-up video to the infrared saga that uh, we did last week about why I couldn't get my wall fan to work using an infrared transmitted from say an Arduino or ESP32 or something. It just would not work. So I asked for your help and it came in spades. I want to do a shout out for PCB Way. Now we all know about their $5 for 10 pieces and their $30 special offer for SMT prototyping. But what else have they got to offer? Remember they've got their 3D printing CNC machining, but let's have a look at their big sales first and see what's going on there. First of all, we've got some coupons. Now these are valid for 90 days, so now's your chance to go in there and get some of those. Now we all know about their $5 for 10 pieces, but look, they've upgraded their material. And here the PCB assembly and the advanced PCB and the rigid flex PCBs are all available with a discount. Now, I mentioned the 3D printing and CNC machining. Look at the discounts on offer here. 37, 45 and 26 percent, depending on the material used. 3D printing has similar offers and so does sheet metal. Now, did you know that PCBWay has a store? Look, you can buy all these things here. Look at that one on the left, the six claw welding table. I've got one of those. I use it all the time. And finally, there's a lucky draw. Log in, have a look around and see what there is available. Yes, PCB Way has got some big sales this December, so why not check them out now? Yes, indeed. I got so many comments and so many suggestions. Obviously, there was quite a bit of overlap between the suggestions, but there were some themes running clear through those comments. Um, the, the main theme was, don't trust the library. Because I said I'd got my library that I'd found on the internet, um, and it was, in fact, this one here. And uh, that seemed to, um, well, it was all things to all men, really. I mean, as you can see there, it says uh, 50 IR protocol supported. Yeah, and 39 send, 39 receive. It's, you know, it's a it's a big thing. If you look at the code, it's like, whoa, it's, it's grown arms and legs and got a life of its own now. And uh, I did say in the last video, I said, well, how do I know, in fact, that it actually is doing what it says it's going to do. Although it's saying, yes, I've detected what the code is from your original remote down here, uh, and I've told you what the codes are. How do I actually know? So I tried it on my bathroom heater, didn't I? Right, that which has an NEC code, it says, and immediately it worked. So I thought, okay, there's nothing wrong with the library. Eh -eh. Okay, let's have a. I'll drop in a bit of video here to show you what the original code uh, on the oscilloscope looks like, so this one, compared to what was being sent out using that library. And uh, yeah, as many, many of you said, don't trust the library. So what we have here then, this is the trace that was being output by that infrared LED from the library that uh, identified it as a Nubert protocol. OK, now what we want to do, of course, is compare this to what's being output by the actual remote control. So what we'll do, we'll take a, a reference on this. So if we press ref. Oh, don't want the help. Right. OK, I want to save this on the internal memory. So save. I think it's done it. So we clear that memory. Right. So now if I bring this oh, wrong one, this one up. There we are. So you can see that the white one is the reference, is the, is the one we've just captured, right? Because what I want to do on channel one now, the yellow case you see here, is to now take the output from the actual remote control and compare them, of course. So here's the uh, the real remote control. Yeah, so I'm going to aim that at the LED receiver down here and press the same on button. So let me just start it going. There we are. Right, so let's compare uh, what we've got by moving things in position that's uh, the end of the pulse there mm -mm. well i can't i can't actually make them match can i they're almost matching now if you look here they match here yes 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 not bad um here though it's starting to get a bit out of sync isn't it you know is this the the pulses here are longer than what the actual pulses are so by the time you get here look the pulse is finished on the actual um, proper remote control where this one's still going and basically if I move this down or we'll move it up over the um, the reference you'll see that they do not match I mean that there's there's quite a discrepancy and that was the problem now another common theme that ran through the comments was 
go and get yourself a universal remote control, a learning remote control, and um, see if that works. So I bought this one here, and this one was only, um, well, less than £10. I think it's about £9.50, actually, from Amazon. It's a, a one for all, which, um, well, it, it does pretty much what it says. It learns remote controls. And, um, and also, of course, it's got a million and one uh, remote controls that come with it. So if you see this list here, like from TV and there's MP3 players and you name it, it does it, right? And there are thousands, of, well, certainly hundreds. I wouldn't be surprised if there's not thousands of codes on here, right? All for different TVs and MP3 players and DVD players and all the rest of it. None of which, of course, I was in the slightest bit interested. What I was interested in is could this learn the code from here? And if it could, will it work? Because I thought, if there's something weird and wonderful about the, this being sent out, I'm really stuck. And I did, in fact, take this apart, as some of you suggested, against my better judgment. So I thought, if I damage anything by taking this apart, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, when you can get them apart. But I got some uh, spudger tools, as they're called. They look like this. Hang on. So I've got some various tools that look like this, you know, plastic little inserts that can go into the, the gap between the case well, the two parts of the case in there, and I've got some metal ones, all nicely rounded. Some of the are sort of rounded points, some of this, this is very good. I've got loads of these tools now, and they, they absolutely work. You know, for phones or remote controls mainly, they work really well. So I took this apart, and there's two things I did on here. One is I looked to see what the circuit was, and all it is is one black blob, you know, round circular blob, with all the tracks from these buttons going into it. There's no components to be seen at all apart from the black blob which is some kind of um, unique chip I guess I don't think there's a circuit under there but who can tell yeah so I couldn't do that but what I did do is put the um, oscilloscope across the LED here as well just to make sure that what this was sending out is what that library was telling me it was sent out and it was it was it was true so okay that's fine so then I set this into learning mode press the on button this went flashy flashy and all the rest of it and it learnt the code and if I press this now you might actually hear the fans off at the moment so if I press this red button you might hear a little beep let's be very quiet and listen for it there you are hear that and my fan is in fact now on what else did I do oh yes I programmed the swing button you know so it swings back and forwards with this this arrow here because it looked a bit like a swingy button so if I press that Oh, I went beep again. Oh yes, if you press this multiple times, it just goes faster and slower and cycles through all the different speeds. Okay, now I can't turn it off. Oh yes, I've used the, the original one to turn it off. Cool. So, what did that prove to me? That proved to me that this was nothing special. It was sending out codes that could be easily identified by this. And that, believe it or not, gave me a whole new lease of life about, right, if that 10 quid, less than 10 quid remote control can learn those codes, so can I. So I, I started looking at the oscilloscope trace and thinking, OK, these are only mark space ratios with 12 different um, bytes coming out. I can start doing that. So down the rabbit hole I went, I was looking at this, looking at that, thinking, OK, how many microseconds of this do I just guess? And, you know, we'll have a starting point. Long story short, while I was doing all that, I stumbled across another infrared remote control. Very, very simple one. But it was meant for the Arduino, and it's it's this one here. What this one does, it receives a code on that uh, infrared receiver there, and that three-legged um, infrared receiver, by the way, you can see it doesn't look like a diode. It's actually three legs, and it demodulates the infrared signal. That is, it takes out all the 38K modulation and just leaves you with the individual bytes. It's, it's very useful for a... Um, us developers in the world because we don't necessarily want the raw data with all the 38k going up and down do we um, which is another thing I discovered incidentally when I put it on scope yes it said it's 38k coming out of here which is pretty standard so it receives the code on here and then it says right I'm sending it out now on this one over here and as you can see I'll put a transistor in there just to sort of boost it up make sure it's getting the full five volts um, the instant I did that the fan started up so I think yay got it except not quite because as you know this is going to be part of my workshop smart heater controller down there which you saw last week and i thought hang on i haven't got an arduino i'm using esp32s and if you look at the code behind here um it's talking about you know timer one timer two i think it uses timer two mainly 
on pin uh, two and three and all that, I think that's that's not going to happen. That code is not going to compile on an ESP32. It doesn't know what it's doing. But I thought, hang on, I've used um, PWM on my smart heater controller already to control the, the fading in and out of my LCD screen. So I thought, I know how to do that. So this has given me the codes of what it detected. And let me just show you those. Right, so what you see here is the sketch running, when it was running, it says, um, it says, okay, press the control button, right? I was a bit slow, so hit it again. Get on with it, bacon, that's what it's saying. So I press it as quickly as I could just to get one burst out, but I think here it got, it still got multiple um, repeats of that code, at least one repeat. So it sent out all these codes, and that's basically, it's in microseconds, so you got on for 1340 microseconds, off for 352, on for 1308, off for 372, and so on. And if you look down here, if I counted up the 12 bytes, I think it ended somewhere. Oh, down here somewhere, I'm not going to add them all up now. Anyway, so it obviously was repeated. Uh, and then I did it again with a different code. What was that? That was off, and this was on, I think. So, oh yes, it did end with this 8120 by the looks of it. So it starts with a fairly long mark and ends with a fairly long mark on period. So I think that is the individual code at the top there, maybe. Anyway, the point is it told me what the mark space ratio was. I thought, right, okay, I can just now program that into an ESP32, which is this little unit on my desk here. So this one now transmits that code. And all I did in that code is this. So this is the code, and at the top there you can see those codes that I've just showed you on the uh, the cool term serial monitor. I've just pasted them in here as a raw data array. Um, then I've basically set up the PWM on the ESP32, which you do very differently from the Arduino. So basically here, PMW channel, you say which channel you're using, and naught to 15 that is. So I'm using naught, I'm saying 38kb. Um, 38 kilohertz output and I'm saying 8-bit resolution because frankly we don't care um, basically that means I can set the mark space ratio between 0 and 255 255 being permanently on 0 being off so I've set it to I think it's 125 or something we'll see later on anyway we attach a certain pin because any pin on the ESP32 can be a PWM output sorry any output pin so not your 39s and 38s they're input only but any output pin can be a PWM pin right so we go right attach that pin to this channel that I've told you here and um, and basically work your way through that array uh, the first if it's an, an odd number then it's um, a mark and if it's an even number then it's a space did I say that the right way around oh you know what I mean the first one's on and the second one's off right just works its way down the, the list and these are the two little things that uh, I wrote just to say go you know write the output on and off so basically we write it on here at 125 kilohertz that's about 50 percent mark space ratio you delay for the certain number of microseconds coming in and then the next bit stops it basically it turns it off again right now I was worried of course that the processor is going to take time leaping between these um, functions and then obviously going to be a few microseconds, I guess, between each one as it jumps around. So I was going to make these in line if there was a problem. Um, but as it happens, I didn't need to. Let's have a look what this generated compared to the, the um, reference output from the original remote control. Right then, let's repeat that exercise. The first trace you'll see on here now is going to be the actual trace of the remote control and then whatever the Arduino sends out so first of all we want to capture the real trace don't we so let's see if we can do that right so that's the trace we want to emulate so let's uh, press ref and save that to internal right that's that's fine now you can hear a beeping because that is in fact the, the fan responding now to the Arduino. So let's see what kind of um, output that's giving out. Let's just trace that on channel one. There it is. Right. Let's compare the two now. I'll just turn off the infrared, otherwise it, yeah, it beeps. Right, so the trace at the top um, is the one now generated from the Arduino, and the one from the bottom is the actual one from the remote control. 
and if I bring them a bit closer together you'll see that look look at this they're I would say pretty much identical they overlay each other beautifully and they look at that yes much much better so that's obviously why my fan now responds now that was the on and speed control sort of combined on one button but it works for all the buttons and the beauty of the library I'm using is that it will tell me what the mark and space ratios in raw format are and I can just code that into my program now fantastic now you might think at that point wow you've cracked it it's all pretty much identical yeah and of course the original bit of um, software this one here says oh yeah that's still your Nubert protocol sending out the same bytes or series of bytes that you said you were going to do and yet the fans still refused to do anything so what i did on here because i was driving it directly from the 3.3 volt pin uh, i i'm now powering it via 5 volts and a transistor um, looking like that a little bit on the circuit diagram very simple right and i, I think I can't remember what that is it's a uh what is that that's like, like a 1k in a series with the um base and also i've got um I think I've got a resistor in series with the 5 volts. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'll, I'll put something in the code. I was, I was just playing around, you know. Now, there's one other thing that um, a lot of you suggested about LEDs. Let me show you what I mean. Right, here we have two types of LED. The crystal clear, water clear ones are 850 nanometer length, uh, wavelength. And the bluish ones are 940 well, these have got a 30 degree spread and these have got a 15 degree spread because uh, some of you said well it might be a different type of led that you need well the news is i can use either of those and that still responds it just doesn't seem to make any difference these might well be transmitting on that frequency 850 or 940 but the receiver uh, seems to accept any sort of wavelength as indeed did all my stuff down here this thing down here accepted anything so it was an interesting idea but apparently not needed one final thing i want to share with you and this is all down to you guys uh, it's this one here no it's not <laughs> i can't see for the wood for the trees there we are there okay yes google this morning sent me a summary of my year in youtube for 2021 and considering i was off youtube from well january through to i can't remember what it was now april or may or something while I was moving house and having this lovely workshop built. Um, I think we did pretty well. Um, 2,299 comments, which I mostly replied to. If you remember, I had a cull a, a few weeks back now of all the ones I couldn't respond to. But look, 22,500 likes. There's a little bit more information, actually, which I'll drop in to this video about how many views and things. But it's, it's mind-boggling, considering my channel's pretty small in the in the scheme of things isn't it the, the amount of people who look at it is quite amazing and i thank you from the bottom of my heart not only that for all the coffees you've bought me oh yeah there's a bit of a fly in the ointment in there yes my coffee has a fly in it um, the reason i chose buy me a coffee to help support my channel so many of you asked was that it was um, a paypal thing it can go directly into my paypal account um pretty easy right yes they took a commission so i did buy a coffee but i mean Unfortunately now, for whatever reason, buy me a coffee and PayPal are no longer friends. They go, no, can't use PayPal anymore. Well, I think you can use PayPal, but it doesn't end up in my PayPal account. It ends up in buy me a coffee account and I've got to withdraw it from that. It's, uh, oh, I, thought, I don't know, I think I might be ditching that idea again. We'll just see how it goes. Okay, cool. I, th I think we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. Great stuff. Thank you so much for the comments and suggestions. If you like this video, and if you like the fact I've got it working with your help, uh, please do like the video. Give it a good thumbs up. Do comment down below. Obviously, uh, Google, YouTube like the fact that people comment on my channel. And I like responding to you guys. You know, there's quite a few names crop up now and now and again, but I love to hear from newbies. Yeah, yeah you, you, you. I like to hear from you this week. Yeah, great. Yeah, I know you're hiding in the corner there. And uh, I'll see you next time. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.